Hello and welcome to the Happiness Is podcast with me, your host, Bruce Edgerson from Happiness Is Egg Shaped. And today I have a very special podcast and a very special podcast guest for you. You might have read this story in the media, on social media, or you might have heard it word of mouth. It ends well, I am pleased to say, but there is a big challenge ahead. And our guest today is right at the front of that with his family, his extended family and his rugby family. He is some man. Uh, He has been through something I hope you don't have to go through and I've never been through and I hope never to be part of. And he has come out to tell the tale. And I am absolutely delighted that he has chosen to come on and be a guest here. So let's get on with it. And please welcome Jamie Coffey, senior physio at Edinburgh Rugby. Hello, my man. Hi, Bruce. How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. No, thank you for coming. People are going to be playing spot the difference here. Uh, two ball guys that forgot to shave this morning. Um, I'm de- I'm delighted to have you on. We- I didn't know you. Um, I knew of you and I'd, I'd seen you at work. Obviously, I'm at Edinburgh a fair bit and uh, you're always a busy man because rugby players hurt a lot. What's it like yeah. being a-, a physio in a professional rugby setup? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's uh I'm really fortunate in that I get to do my job in an environment that I love working in. Um, I grew up playing rugby. I wanted to be involved in, the, in sport and work in sport. So, yeah, I feel like I'm in a really fortunate position where I get to kind of combine my hobby with with um, my career in a way. So, yeah, I've been with uh, with Scottish rugby in various guises for kind of the last 10 years now. Um, dotted around Glasgow, Edinburgh, and a few of the national kind of teams as well. So it's, uh, it's great. I'm really lucky and, uh, yeah, to have a job that I really love doing. But now, uh, yeah, it keeps, keeps me busy, that's for sure. It does keep you busy. The hours are ridiculous. Now, physios put people back together physically, but you must have heard so many stories, so many gripes and moans. You've been there. At, usually, you probably have to deal with people when they've had a, a negative happen to them, but you'll have been in changing rooms and good things have happened. You must have some deep, dark secrets of some pretty uh, well-known rugby players. Yeah, there's obviously there's there's good times mixed with the bad. Obviously, the nature of my job means that um, I, mean, I predominantly work with with the long term injured guys. So I will generally see guys from the from the very very beginning of their injury journey, probably at, at the at their worst at their lowest point. Um, but then also throughout that journey, right into the point where they return to play, and you know, and the kind of elation that comes along with that. So yeah, that's a really rewarding, obviously, part of the job to be to be part of that. Um, Rugby is obviously a physical sport. Uh, guys pick up a lot of injuries; they put themselves through the ringer. Um, but ultimately, it's what it's what keeps me in gainful employment. So uh, that's uh, <laughs> it's not all bad, I suppose. But yeah, there's uh, I've been fortunate along the along the way to to have worked with some great teams and had some be involved with with some teams that have been really successful. And you know, that's a, a nice wee kind of a cherry on the top moment when you when you get to celebrate the wins with with the. Uh, with the teams that you're working with and, uh, as well as dealing with the lows sometimes as well. You dealt with that answer brilliantly because I was fishing for some dirt there on players and you've completely avoided it. I think a career in politics is ahead for you, my man. That's it, straight back. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jay, you've, you've come into the the sort of focus just very recently because of something that happened to to you and your family and um i first picked it up when i saw it on social media and i read the story and i thought i know that guy and as it turns out your wife works in the same school as my wife and that village that is scotland and is rugby and you know we've got so many people in common and i read the story and the the name jumps out at me because simpson's hospital was where i was born because i was a difficult birth but by no means what you've experienced so tell me tell me the story yeah so um my wife emma uh, we found out we were expecting twins um kind of totally by surprise maybe like march april last last year and uh, so they were due in in september we've got a, an older uh son rudy who's actually just turned three as well and uh yeah we basically emma went into labor at 28 weeks um which was Obviously unexpected, um, very kind of sudden uh, labor, blue lighted to the to the hospital and kind of uh, baby boys, Campbell and Hamish, um, delivered kind of uh, emergency C-section and, and kind of immediately transferred to the, the special um, special baby unit in, in the Simpsons Hospital um, up at the Royal. And yeah, we spent 
uh, just shy of three months um, every day up at the hospital with the boys while, while they were inpatients. And yeah, over, over last summer, so they were born in June. And, you know, we really experienced firsthand the the amazing place that, that is the neonatal unit there. We, we obviously had kind of been briefed that, you know, with there being a twin pregnancy, there was a, a likelihood that we would spend some small time, hopefully, uh, within the unit. Um, but we, we hadn't really kind of given much of a second thought to it other than, you know, we might end up being there, we might not, we'll see how things go. And, you know, ultimately we ended up spending a, a long time there last summer with them. Uh, so we, yeah, like I said, we experienced firsthand, like the, the absolutely amazing place that it is, the amazing care uh, that all the staff provide, um, the amazing facilities and everything that, that, that goes on there. And, you know, when you spend so much time in, in a place like that, you become really attached to to the environment, really attached to the setting. And, you know, we developed uh, a really you know, strong you know, kind of bond with, with the place um, in the time that we were there. And, and we're really fortunate in that, that we've had a positive outcome and that, that both boys turned one a couple of weeks ago and, and are, are, are doing really well at the moment. So we, we we're, we've been we feel incredibly fortunate and grateful that you know we've, we've been able to come out the other side and, and and be able to kind of reflect positively. But at the same time, it, it's kind of given us a, a a big push to want to give back to the unit to you know want to raise awareness of of the amazing work that they do and and also to to support the the charity which is affiliated with the unit. Um, um you know we've we've kind of. We just wanted to kind of show our, our appreciation and, and raise funds for the, for the charity as, as much as we could, um, and using the platform that, that we've got in the, the kind of the rugby community is, is as we all know, is, a, is an incredibly close knit community. And you know, I've been involved in the sport since I was three, four years old, and played at probably too many clubs to name down the years. But and I'm fortunate to work in the sport, and um, I suppose what what greater way to to raise awareness than to kind of tap into your network in a way, I suppose. Right, I mean, so many questions. Um, as a as a dad myself, there are a few times where I felt more helpless than when my wife was giving birth. I almost like you don't become invisible, but but near enough. Um, you you have to go to hospital. It's obviously not planned. There's a whole load of things going through your head and your heart, and I, I don't need you and, or want you to go and relive that. But when you arrive somewhere like that, was there a sense of they've got this? There, this is under control. Uh, well, to 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 muddy the waters even more, I wasn't actually even there. Um, I was uh, I was originally on a stag do that weekend, so my brother-in-law was was uh, was actually staying down with Emma um, for the weekend. Uh, so I was on a, on a stag do up in Inverness. Um, when I was actually told I was a close contact of someone who had been watching Scotland get knocked out of the European football with uh, of COVID, obviously. So uh, I had to leave the stag do. I was actually isolating my parents' house in Creef, um, so I could obviously stay away from him. I stay away from, from Rudy and, and whatnot. When I, yeah, I got the phone call on the Sunday morning to say that, that, she'd, uh, that she'd gone into labour. So I wasn't actually able to go to the hospital until they were five days old, um, until the, the fifth day. So that was, uh, yeah, that was... That was the by far and away the, the most difficult experience I've had in my entire life. It was it was awful, but I mean that's one of the things that the charity charity funded um, is one of the things which kind of kept me going was that was this VCreate system where it's kind of like an online platform where you can log in and you can view videos and photos and bits and pieces that, that the nurses can upload. And you know, although at the time it it, it was the only contact I had with uh, with them, um, and we yeah, we had a feel as you'd expect in 28 weeks, we had a, a really traumatic um, entry and, and particularly with Campbell, a, a, you know, a relatively difficult first few days in particular. So, yeah, I think having that reassurance of obviously Emma spending time in the unit and being able to speak to Emma and um, and having phone calls from the doctors and the nurses that were looking, being able to phone into the unit, being able to look at videos and pictures and, and see, you know, see your boys there, then, um, you know, that was, you know, that was huge. Um, so yeah, I, I suppose <laughs> I'm not sure I can relate to being present. That's uh, I wasn't. Well, I I felt helpless, and I was there. I, I was there, and I felt helpless. You were there for five days. I, I can't. Yeah, well, and I, I with can't Rudy, I wasn't there either. I was actually I was actually away in Canada with the sevens. Um, when, 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 he wasn't as premature. He was four weeks early. So uh, yeah, that's gone down really well. <laughs> 
you your wife deserves at least one medal, if not three. <laughs> yeah. One for yeah. each of the boys, and one well, probably four. One for you as well. So you, you're you're then able to go. Um, I would imagine you're not able to hold them. No, yeah, that's it's the, it's, it's funny. It's the small things when when you're in the unit like that. Obviously, when they're they're so preterm, it's or so premature. Uh, it really is just it's minimal handling. It's minimal involvement, um, and it's really in the unit just trying to keep them keep them going and re recreating the womb as, as much as they possibly can. So, I think it was around about four weeks where Emma managed to managed to hold uh, Hamish because obviously he was the stronger stronger baby at the time. Hamish for the first time, and I think they were about six weeks at, um, when Emma was able to hold them both at, at the same time. So, yeah, it's funny. Like on the the Instagram page, we've, we've tried to doc that's part of the kind of awareness side of things is, is we're, we've tried to document kind of the milestones within our journey uh, as much as possible um maybe because it is, it's it's slightly easier for us because we, we had a positive outcome um but um yeah we we were maybe in those early days very like quite reluctant to maybe share with friends and family like you know quite what what was happening and then we've kind of become more comfortable with it and you know want to use our kind of experience to shed a light on on the amazing things that are done there but yeah that's it it's, it's a very different experience certainly but we were we were very much want to be hands-on as much as possible so you know we wanted to be involved in usual things changing nappies like cares um you know feeding them um through their the kind of the the syringe feeding and, and bits and pieces like we we, we tried to be as, as involved as possible um because that's ultimately how you how you develop that bond when you don't have the opportunity to do, to develop it in in your kind of normal ways. Um, but yeah, it was it was certainly a tough tough uh, tough start. And and how did Big Brother quote like you're saying you find it difficult to tell others? What what do you tell their their big brother? Uh, Rudy Joe, he was an absolute star. Um, he was only two two and three months when they when they were born. He he, he was excellent. I mean, he did spend. An entire summer with uh, with both sets of grandparents, so he he lived on ice cream and cake for three months. Uh, yeah, he was fine. He, he, he was it. all right. <laughs> he loved it. And uh, I actually remember the first time we brought him into the hospital. Um, he had his big brother pass, and he came in, and the nurses were great and kind of like showing around, and obviously didn't quite compute that he had two brothers. So he brought him to the first incubator. And we're like, this is Campbell, you know, like he had his pet. The picture that he drawn was up on the up on the side of the incubator, and. He said, "All right, cool. That's great. Yeah, there's Campbell. Hi, Campbell. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Okay, we'll take you around. We'll go, we'll go see Hamish." And we walked over, and he was like, another one. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, two. There's two. Finished introducing him to Hamish. And he's trying to go over to the other side to, to meet the other baby. He's like, "No, no, no. Just these two. Just the two here." But uh, he was a superstar, uh, an absolute star, and I guess that probably helped with, you know, having you know, a kind of transition period. Like he kind of knew the boys had arrived, and then they were going to be coming home, and. Yeah, just probably a bit too young to, to realise, but yeah, certainly lots of trips to the zoo and the park and uh, probably more ice cream than's healthy for a two-year-old. Ah, uh, good lad, quite right. Milk it. So uh, I imagine, you know, you'll look back on moments of your life. Uh, Emma says, yes, you get the job you want, you get the keys to your first house. Okay, they're now ready to go home. Was that... Uh, oh, massive. What, what, what happened? Was, was that, you know rainbows and violins and music playing or yeah i mean i was it's just you you're, you're i mean you're well geared up for it you kind of you have your, your you know the date that you're kind of like you're told where you're prepared so well in advance like that's that's one thing that we experience within within the unit is that you're involved in everything every every care decision nothing nothing is done without you being made aware of what's been done why it's been done what the outcome means um you know and you know it is a small unit, but it's a big unit at the same time. Uh, but there's a, like the care team is, is quite specific. So, you know, we were involved. We knew kind of, you know, weeks in advance to, to prepare that, you know, things were going well and, and that we'd be getting home at some point. So we actually had them home separately. So Hamish came home about 10 and a half weeks uh, or just, just around the 10 weeks. And he was home for just about two weeks before Campbell came home. Um, so that was quite, that way kind of, it's a kind of a false dawn in a way we were kind of, oh, we've got one at home and this is easy. And then we got the second at home and someone's like, all oh, right, this is what it's like to have twins with a two-year-old. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was, it was huge. Like the day that we were able to, that's the thing that you want, I guess, as a dad, you want to leave the hospital with that photo of, of you carrying the baby chair, like the car seat, you walking out of the hospital. And that was, that was what I had in my head. I was like, we're going to leave. I'm going to have two car seats. I'm going to be walking out of that door. So that, yeah, the day that, that we, we, 
we knew we were getting both home uh, was was yeah huge. But at the same time, you really kind of like that nerve wracking kind of sensation of like because that's your that was our safety net. Our safety net was was being in the unit, and although we were involved as we spent huge portions of time there, you're still being supported in like in every manner, like in in every way, like like um, so. Yeah, that was that was difficult because you're suddenly home and you're right. Actually, I'm now responsible. Like now, I have to do all of this, um, and there's nobody to tell me I'm doing it wrong, and there's nobody to tell me I need to do this or that. So uh, yeah, that was that was big, and that was a kind of like you're almost like the anxiety of like right, we've left, we're we're home, um, but obviously we were supported um, with the discharge team and the community nursing team for for an extended period afterwards, and. Um, and just the nature of boys being prem, like we've been back and forth to the hospital quite a few times, and we'll be we'll be back and forward multiple times again, no doubt, um, with uh, with reviews and appointments and things. But yeah, it, it certainly does leave an imprint on you. Does it help being a medical professional, or does that make it worse? Uh, I can't. Do you know what? So we we have our developmental reviews, and we go to see the the physios who are great. They're amazing, and they're uh, big rugby fans as well. So we also have a chat about the rugby. Uh, although one's a Glasgow fan, I don't think she's too fussed about being working for Edinburgh. Um, but they like, I don't know, I feel like because I'm a physio, I should know what I'm doing, but I'm used to dealing with 100 plus kilo guys that, you know, blunt force trauma is my kind of forte. That's what I deal with. Not, you know, not 12, you know, one year old babies and the kind of things that they're doing. So I'm totally in awe of like the things that they're suggesting doing. And Emma's looking at me like, you should know this. Like, I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue what's going on here. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess it kind of helped in a way. Like in the unit initially, you like you, you understand a bit. Of, like I, I, I worked before, I worked in rugby, I worked in the NHS, I worked in respiratory wars and medical wars. You, you bits come back to you and you understand a bit of the kind of medical lingo and you, you kind of pick up bits and pieces and you can understand things. Or I could, I was able to kind of explain maybe things to Emma like that I'd kind of picked up. But at the same time, there's a lot of things I didn't understand and I, you kind of feel like you, you had a kind of a half understanding. Um, but yeah, it, it probably helped to have, when having conversations with the doctors that you you had a little bit more of an inclination of like, okay, I, I know where you're going with that. I've got a bit more comprehension of what that means. Um, so it, 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 didn't, it didn't help. But yeah, certainly when it comes to, to teaching a, a baby to roll over, not my bag. <laughs> really so, running around in the garden, falling over. Yeah, I'm just about yeah, that. Yeah, you could, you could do that. That's a lot like Darcy Graham. Yeah, I, I can see that. So you're in the unit um you must have a a huge respect for the staff that work there because they're awesome. not just looking after the physical they're they're dealing with a dad who's feeling a bit helpless they're dealing with mum who wants to scoop up her kids and and do things that mums do so the those relationships and the emotions that they're dealing with that must have been a huge support to you massive and that's the kind of the, the lasting kind of memories that we have of being in the unit is how incredible the staff there are. And, you know, I, we were in a, in a situation for a long period of time in the, in the, in the intensive care unit where it was one-to-one -one nursing. So, and quite often we'd have the same nurses on rota for a week where we'd maybe have three, three long shifts, three 12 hour shifts that, that they'd be with them. So you, you end up getting to know the staff, you know, relatively well um, and kind of developing a little bit of a, a relationship with them and, and being comfortable being vulnerable as well. Um, because it's, like, it's the most vulnerable I've ever felt in my entire life. And it, you, yeah, you, you do learn to be okay with that in a way and and have that kind of relationship with them where you, you, you feel comfortable asking difficult questions and being able to hear difficult, difficult responses sometimes as well. Um, but yeah, that's it's an absolutely incredible job. Like the, the way the unit runs is almost like, it's like military precision. Everything they do is, is so fine tuned. Um, and the, the, the staff, the experience that they've got, the, the way they speak to people, the way they kind of hold themselves, it, it's just, it, it really is, it's phenomenal. It, it really is. It's, it's, it's one of the most incredible places I've ever witnessed work in, in person. It's just so fine tuned, and just so many amazing people doing amazing things. That's and that's the that's the, the kind of the crux of it, I suppose. Like they are, yeah, doing amazing stuff in there. And there's, you know, now you've you've had that experience. It's turned out to be a positive outcome, as you've said. Boys are home. Uh, 
are, they're probably going to, as they get older, claim two birthdays in the year. Oh, yeah. uh, they're they're, they're going to milk that one, I think, if they if they learn a lot about this. But now you've decided, right, let's put something back in. Uh, and now you're one of a litter of kids. So this is not just you. There's a huge team around you for this. So talk us through what you've got coming up. Yeah, so like, I'm, I'm one of six. I'm the, the eldest of, of, of six kids. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're a real close-knit family. And uh, it was actually my brothers and sisters kind of all came up with this idea. When the boys were actually still in hospital, we'd been talking about, like, how do we... How do we raise, you know, kind of awareness? How do we do a fundraiser? Like, let's let's do something. Um, and it rapidly went from being let's do something, kind of like small and just kind of us and like we'll kind of part away and to like, well, do you know, if we're going to do it, let's let's go, let's go big, let's do let's do as much as we can, uh, and you know, let's let's really put ourselves out there. So, so my sister Emily actually kind of came up with the idea that like, well, let's let's go the length of Scotland, let's go south to north, let's cover the whole lot. My wife Emma's from Orkney, so we're like, right, well, we might as well finish as far north as we possibly can. And, you know, like, let's just just get ourselves there on foot. We'll bike, hike, we'll bike, we'll hike, we'll swim, we'll run. Um, like, yeah, that sounds great, let's do it. And then, so we got down to the kind of logistical planning of it and I was like, yeah, get me involved, like, I want to do all of this. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's been a real, it's really pulled us together. And it's, it's really kind of in the past, like I say, it was a, a, 10 months ago probably we started planning it. And it's come around real quickly. I thought I had loads of time to train and it's suddenly like, all right, we're, we started at the weekend, just past there. Um, but no, it, it's great. And we're all taking part in it. So there's four of us started in Gretna. We cycled uh, over two days up to Mogai. It was about 170k last weekend on Saturday. We met my parents in Mogai. They are currently on day four of the West Island Way. Uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know if loving it is isn't it? <laughs> at that stage quite yet. But they're looking forward to, I think, uh, the end of day pint can't come quick enough. So uh, they're on day four at the moment. We're, we're heading up to Fort William after after work tomorrow. Head up to meet them uh, in Fort William. Then we're uh, we're all actually going to be in, in Fort William over the weekend. We've got a big house. The whole family's there. Partners, kids. So we're yeah. Climb Ben Nevis Saturday, uh, Sunday. There's a, a group that are running to Loch Lochy, which is I think about sixteen k. And then the three of us are kind of taking a relay to swim across Loch Lochy, which is sixteen k. So, uh, I'll be floundering the odd couple of hundred years to give everybody else a break. Um, the Monday's the big one. That's that's Emma's big challenge. That's uh, she she enjoys her running. So that's a, a 50k run along Loch Ness. Um, so uh, yeah, her, she'll be running it. I will be uh, walking most of that 50k, I think. And then from the Tuesday where we're on the bikes, there's uh, about five of us that are cycling north. Um, from Inverness up to up to John and Groats over three days. So that's about two hundred fifty k in three days. So it'll be great. I'm really excited for it. Um, yeah, it was great to get started at the weekend because, like I say, it's been so long in the planning, um, and we feel like we've been putting ourselves out there. I'm not a big person to be out on social media, uh, out of my comfort zone, put myself out there, uh, really try to pump it as much as possible. And it's it's great. We've and it, we've been absolutely blown away by the generosity and kindness of people, um, say friends, family, people we know, but also like people who don't really know that well, like acquaintances, colleagues, um, people who've heard our story and I've, I've kind of logged in and, and, and donated it. It's, it's, it's genuinely been overwhelming, the, the, the feedback that we've had and the support that we've had. And that that's really the kind of big push there is, is to, right, well, people have backed this, let's get it done, let's, let's do it. Um, so that's been that's been awesome. That's been awesome. It's it's such a cool thing. I love that the whole family are into it and everybody's getting because it is. It's a a kid arrives in the family. It's a it's a big deal for everyone. Um, absolutely, absolutely. And you you're all going to rally. And the two of them will be totally oblivious to the whole thing. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, Rudy's delighted. He's in a camper van for the for the for the next week. That's all he wants is to be in a camper van. Um, so uh, he's uh, he, he'll be he's in the support vehicle with with grandpa quite right and he'll be milking it for all the ice cream he can oh, get from yeah you can bet that you can bet that <laughs> so we're on instagram you're at stride for simpsons uh people sure, can yeah. go on and, and check out and i know you've been planning some content for that which i my nose is really bothering me i'm really looking forward to seeing that so we're on instagram and you've also got the website everything's on there people can donate um to the to the cause the last time i looked 
I think you were just about at your target and you told me the other day that you, you initially you thought about one target and then I think it was another a sister again said, no, no, let's go big. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're very, I think we hit nine, the target's 10,000 at the moment, we hit 9,000 this morning, um, which is amazing. Like, that's almost double our original target. Um, so that, that's, that's, that's phenomenal. We've obviously uh, got the auction, which we're running alongside um, for, for the Simpsons Special Care Babies Charity as well. Um, so yeah, we're just blown away, honestly, blown away. Like we, we'd never, 10 months ago when we sat down, we would never have ever thought that this is what we, what, the money that we'd be raising. And so it, it, it's, it goes to such a good, such a good charity that, that supports the unit in, in such an amazing way. And, you know, we're, we're delighted to be playing a small part in, in, in giving back a little bit. Now, one of the other things we, we spoke about the other day, there's the money, which is, you know, you're going to hit your 10,000 target. I'm absolutely certain of that. The auction items are amazing. I'm pretty confident the rugby family are going to get on there and start bidding on some really impressive prizes. But one of the things we talked about was actually raising awareness is as important as raising the money because yeah. you you had no idea the unit was there. Yeah, massively. That's it. It's, it's just having an opportunity to to firstly say thank you um, to the unit, give give a little bit back, support the charity, and, and support the things that they do. But yeah, like you say, raise raise awareness of of the unit's existence for for a start, but also the amazing ways in which the charity supports the unit and how that then impacts on not just the care of babies within the unit in Edinburgh, but also across Scotland, across the UK, and and, and worldwide. I mean, there's a, the charity kind of functions in a, in a number of different ways. They're kind of from a clinical sense, they. Uh, they help fund equipment on the on the unit, which which wouldn't be kind of standard within a neonatal unit. Um, they help to fund staff training. Um, you know, if, if staff within the unit, nurses, medical staff, or any any staff are, are looking to progress and, and do kind of higher education or, or further studies, there's there's a funding pot there through the, through the charity. And they also they fund research, um, which is you know obviously some of it's hosted in Edinburgh, some of it's hosted elsewhere, some of it's collaborative. Which is really impactful and can be mass, can be game changing in, in the management of, of, of preterm babies and premature babies, and that's not just in Scotland. That's impactful. That's that's everywhere. So that's how the, the charity supports the unit in a, in a clinical sense, but also for like a family support sense. You know, just small things like the VCreate system that which is funded by them. The um, small keepsakes that we got. You know, milestone cards, uh, footprints, handprints, cards. You know, big brother passes. You know, things things like that, which which really help to make you know your kind of day to day life you know memorable in a way, like keepsakes that you can reflect upon and, and go actually. Do you know what? That that's what the charity. That's how the charity really really helped us individually with small things like that. But in the kind of gra grander scheme, the things that they fund and the things that they support impact on on the care of the, the babies within the unit hugely as well. So. It was a it was a double sided element. It was fundraising, but it's also going like this is what the charity does. This is what the unit does, and, and, and we can support this, and we can help to keep this going. We can facilitate them being able to keep doing these amazing things. Um, so yeah, that's that's the, the biggest driver for us. There's three strings to this, I think, my man. There's there's the money you're putting in. There's the awareness you're raising. Of, um, but something you won't give yourself credit for at all is sharing your story. I think that's going to be something that's really powerful. I think people won't always have a positive outcome but to hear someone who's been through it is able to talk the way you're talking i think that is as important as the, as the two other things that you're doing and, and i take my hat off to you because you've been through an experience that um you know i hope not many others have to go through but you've you've come out the other side and you're willing to tell the tale so now you go off to prepare for this bonkers challenge that you've got in mind. Give us a rallying call to get people behind you. Yeah, I mean, we've been absolutely blown away by the support that we've had so far. And, you know, just ask people to to have a look at the website, have a look at the auction that we've got going on. We've been so well supported by, by people within the rugby community. I have shamelessly tapped into my network uh, across Scottish rugby friends at different clubs. Uh, I've pestered kit men all over the place to and players to, to sign various bits and pieces. Yeah, uh, right. So we've got men signed Scotland men's jersey, women's jersey, national team jerseys. We've got Edinburgh, Glasgow, I've got Ulster jersey, 
Alexander's uh, signed a pair of his boots that he's uh, trotted around Scotland in. Uh, we've got. Did he uh, say that? Say say they were lions boots. <laughs> say more for the lions. He's. Uh, we've got a lions jersey which is signed by the by the Scottish guys who toured, uh, and I suppose that the, the kind of icing on the top was. Um, Scottish rugby have, have, have donated a, a mascot spot at the Scotland Argentina Test match, which is upcoming. So um, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see King Boff um, back in the, his Argentinian colours at, at Murrayfield, uh, and a good few of the Edinburgh contingent running out as well. So you know that's 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 huge for us. That's a that's a, a big uh, a big selling point. We're really grateful to to everyone who's supported us and, and donated really generously, um, signatures and shirts and all sorts. So. Yeah, that's obviously on the auction. That's running for another two and a half weeks. Um, we are uh, yeah putting some content together at the moment, which is going to make uh, hopefully not me TikTok viral, but a few people TikTok viral. If that's even the same. Yeah. Um, I, I so yeah, it. no, it's, it's it's brilliant, and you know, like you say, it's it's fundraising, it's it's awareness raising, and it's you know it's telling our story, and that's that's uh, what it's all about. You need to find out who the mascot is and make sure that they get paired up with an Edinburgh player and they just have a little, thanks for this. Yeah, Thank you. exactly. Uh, exactly. Brilliant. Jamie, I, I, I'm sorry that this is kind of the way that we've become acquaintances and getting to know each other, but uh, I'm glad that we've got a positive story to share and, and hopefully people that are listening to this or watching this will get behind it. They'll follow you on Instagram to see what's going on and they can have a look on the website to donate or get involved in the auction. It just leaves me to say uh, well done on on the journey so far. Uh, please pass on my best to your good lady and, and the three boys okay. and the family and the the litter of coffees that are going to be getting together and mum and dad that are currently trudging along the West Highland Way. I hope it all turns out well and you can have a big celebration together. Right. Cheers, Bruce. Thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome to see you. Thanks, my man. Uh, what a story to tell and what a top, top man, what a great family and it's great to hear that the rugby family has rallied around and contributed to hopefully raising awareness, raising some pennies and letting Jamie tell his story. If you've enjoyed it, you can catch us on Apple, Acast and Spotify. You can watch on Facebook and YouTube. Please get involved. Please donate. Please go and have a look. Uh, raise awareness. Tell your friends. Retweet, share, do all those things. Uh, it is a great story. And I'm really, really pleased that it's turned out well in the end. My name is Bruce Edgerson from the Happiness Is podcast. My happiness is egg-shaped. I look forward to speaking to you all again very, very soon. In the meantime, stay safe.